Let's move over to the NFC. We're going to start at the bottom again. Cardinals at five and a half. <laughs> under. <laughs> That's an under. Are you kidding me? What do the Cardinals have? They have a terrible coach. They suddenly found the next Adam Gase to be their head coach, but weirder. Looks like he turned Adam Gase and into a mouse. And then you have Kyler Murray, <laughs> who's like, is he going to show up? But we're... Kyler Murray, first of all, can't do anything without DeAndre Hopkins. We know this. And what are the Cardinals trying to do? Get rid of DeAndre Hopkins. Their defense is a disaster. You lost Byron Murphy Jr., who's your only bright spot last year. The Cardinals are going to suck. Yeah, I see. they're <laughs> going to be top three next year. Like they're going to be three and thirteen, three and fourteen, four and thirteen, five and twelve. It's going to be ugly. The Cardinals fan base, RIP. Yeah. And they're the bottom. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think I'm taking the under. Uh, Bucks at six and a half. Uh, that's a tough one with for me. Baker. It's tough. I I think I think they'll win seven games. I'll take the over. They still get players on defense. I they mean, their defense was pretty banged up last year. You still have Devin White there. You re-signed Shaquille Barrett. Um, you still have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. And then you focus on getting a running back in the draft, which clearly they will because they cut Leonard Fournette. Yeah, I think you can win six or seven games. That's a tough one for me. I like them at six wins, personally. I think a slight under. But I'm not gonna, I wouldn't bet this. I, I have my stance on this next one. Falcons at seven and a half. Um over over yeah i'm gonna take the over i think the falcons are gonna be sneaky good next year they were really competitive last year they're in a weak nfc and there's an outside shot they get lamar jackson i like it if they don't get lamar jackson i'm taking the under absolutely because yeah. desmond ritter not impressed from what i've seen so far he played two games <laughs> what do you what want seen, him to do? What I've seen from Desmond Ritter, I'm not impressed. I need to see more from Desmond he Ritter. He was the best quarterback in college for two years. Nah, I gotta see more. <laughs> you gotta show me more. Okay, he will. Panthers at seven and a half. Uh under. Hmm. I don't know. Frank Reich. I get you're rebuilding, but you still don't have any weapons yet. Your defense is fine, but if teams really hone in on you, I don't. I don't think you're going to go over seven and a half now, especially with a rookie quarterback. Frank Reich hasn't shown that he can actually turn around a team yet and make them successful. Very hot and cold with the Colts. And I don't think the Panthers was necessarily the right situation. And there's certain coaches like Andy Reid, Hall of Fame head coach, all time great, who can just jump to the Chiefs and then be successful. Frank Reich failed in Indianapolis into a job with the Panthers. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I'm taking the over. The over? Okay. You got Adam Thielen. You got Hayden Hurst, Miles Sanders. Then most likely get CJ Stroud. If they don't get him, they'll probably get... Maybe they go after Anthony Richardson. I think they'll eventually get CJ Stroud. And of the prospects in the draft, he looks to be a pretty good one. The division's weak. The weapons, they went out and got some weapons for him. They're going to go out and draft a wide receiver as well. I don't know. Their defense played pretty well last year. I think they can win eight games. Eight games. So the over, I wouldn't bet this, but if I were to bet this, I'd say the over. Yeah. But I think eight wins. Yeah. If there's a, I don't like saying players are going to fall off, but if there's a player that I would be tread very cautiously next year with, it'd be Miles Sanders. That's fair. Great offensive line going to a less of a great offensive line. And then are we bragging about Adam Thielen being our receiver? Like he's good, but he's also really old. Yeah. But I think they're going to draft another receiver. Yeah, they better. And then the Bears at seven and a half. Bears at seven and a half. I'm going to hammer the over on that. Absolutely. I love everything the Bears are doing this year. Um, they made one of the best trades of the offseason. They brought in Tremaine Edmonds. They've made a few other key signings on their offense and their defense. And then Justin Fields, they're fully committed to him. So he has that peace of mind right now. Doesn't need to play as anxiety ridden as he's looked in the past. And he seemed like he got over that hump last year in the NFL and started playing a lot more free. I like what I saw from him last year. And I think building a right around him was the smart decision. So hammer the over on that one. How about the... Uh... How about the Packers at seven and a half? Under. With what team? Yeah. Who, who, are, who is, first of all, what is Matt LaFleur? We don't know yet. Is Matt LaFleur an actual NFL head coach or was Aaron Rodgers running that offense? We don't know yet. And what 
we do know is Matt LaFleur decided it would be better to go for a field goal instead of just get Aaron Rodgers the ball on fourth down when you were probably going to lose anyway, so you might as well go for the touchdown. I agree. I think the Packers are going to be terrible next year. And then the Rams at seven and a half. Oh, under. What? They're also the Rams in what team? Who is your quarterback next year? Matt Stafford's going to come back, and he was contemplating retirement because they didn't know if his elbow was going to be intact. Like, am I really going to have that much faith in the faith in the Rams next year? Not really. I'm going to push on them. I think it's seven wins, maybe eight wins, but I don't see seven, maybe eight. Good. Okay. Because if he does play, they still have Cooper Cup, and they have Sean McVay. He's proven to be a good coach. They got players on defense. They're going to lose a lot of players. This is a rebuilding year, yeah. but I wouldn't bet on this team. Yeah, I just think you get swept in your division by the Seahawks and the Niners, and then... They usually own the Seahawks, though. You get two wins versus the... Um, the lowly Cardinals. The lowly Cardinals next year. All right. How- Vikings at eight and a half. Uh, okay, so the Vikings could win 13 games, or they could win four. So this is really tough. So I think eight and a half is good for them. I like it because I don't think they're bad, but they also need a defense. Yeah. Badly. I think they're eight and eight. I think they're eight and nine or nine and eight. And they nailed the projection here because there's no way they win 13 games next year. They had 12 one score wins last year. Yeah. And the games that they lost, they got demolished. So I have no idea. What is your thoughts on Kevin O'Connell? Because I thought he was a really good coach last year that just flew under the radar and then no one talked about him. Do you think he'll like, do you think anyone cares what the Vikings do or if they're, they suck, they'll be like, eh, whatever. And then if he coaches a really good team and they get even better next year, they'll just be like, okay, fine. I would compare Kevin O'Connell. I don't think he's as good as this coach I'm about to mention. He kind of reminds me of Kevin Stefanski. Sam. Because yeah, Kevin Stefanski. He's a good coach. I think a lot of people are high on him. But I think last year, for example, for the Browns, they had a good season given the circumstances, but I don't think he got a lot of credit. And when they do play well, I don't think he's necessarily highlighted from it. So I think... He won coach of the year. He won coach of the year. Yeah, with Baker. Yeah, with Baker. Give him credit there. Um, (laughs) So yeah, I don't know. Kevin O'Connell, I'm not as high on him as I am with Kevin Stefanski, but he's interesting. Seahawks, eight and a half. (laughs) (laughs) Over. I mean, Pete Carroll just had his best draft um, since he drafted the Legion of Boom. And then what did it take to build that team? It took two, three really good drafts back to back. And I think he still has a high draft pick because they have the Broncos pick and you're still building around Geno Smith. So you have the luxury of we have Geno for a year. We don't really need to worry about getting a quarterback until next year or the year after. And I think a lot of people being down on Geno Smith, I don't think that's really fair because I think he's a big, strong guy understands how to read the field now and is able to push the ball downfield is a leader in the locker room, a very selfless guy and someone that I can get behind and players should get behind on a team. And then we're only going to see their receivers grow. We're only going to see the ascendance of their elite running back backfield. So I think Seattle, another good draft this year, focusing on defense. If you can get something back to the Legion of Boom when you already took Tyreek Woolen, who was a top corner last year, I think, yeah, I think the Seahawks are going to be very good next year. Yeah, I like him at like 9, 10 wins. So I I take them as the over. So I'm not going there. So Saints, nine and a half. Uh, yeah, I think they get 10 wins. I like Derek Carr signing there. I think it was the fresh start he needed. I think his career is going to be revitalized a little bit. I think they rotated through Jameis, Andy Dalton, um, Taysom Hill at quarterback last year. Didn't really understand what they want to be, but they bring in Derek Carr. Um, he gets a stability in a franchise and a coach who actually wants him there because we went through John Gruden. And they're like, oh, new coach. New team. Does the coach actually want him? Derek Carr's like, I don't know. And then Basachi is like, I want you to be my quarterback. And Derek Carr's like, okay, I'll lead you guys to the playoffs. And then like, oh, Basachi was a great coach. And then they're like, let's bring in Josh McDaniels. And Josh McDaniels like, I don't want Derek Carr. And then he goes to New Orleans. He feels wanted now. So I think they're going to have a good season. Uh, I like the 9 to 10 win mark. I wouldn't say, I don't know how I feel about the team completely. I know they have a decent receiver core now with Chris Olave and Mike Thomas, Alvin Kamara, and the Juice. defense is pretty good. Juice Landry. Um, I'll take the over. 
I like 10 and 7 for the Saints. They're definitely the best team in that division. I don't have any faith in the Falcons or the Panthers or really any of the teams in that division uh, for the most part. Uh, and they are at 11 and a half. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, but I still need to know, is Brock Purdy or Trey Lance going to play? Because we can't start the season with Sam Darnold, right? That's true. Because it's looking like Sam Darnold's going to be the starter at the beginning of the year because Trey Lance and Brock Purdy, neither of them are going to be ready to go at the beginning of the season. So we're rolling with Darnold. I don't love that. I mean, especially I don't care who you're going up against, the Cardinals. The Seahawks, the Rams, like, he's going to keep the other team in games. I don't care how good your team is. And does that. We saw that with Brock Purdy going out and then Christian McCaffrey. It's like, yeah, the 49ers still do need a quarterback. This is why I hate the take where people are like, oh, Brock Purdy sucks. The 49ers don't even need a quarterback. Like, really? Well, let's see what happens when he gets hurt. It's like, oh, yeah, Christian McCaffrey can't actually play quarterback and you can't actually make a Super Bowl. So this is a team who still hasn't addressed the most important position on the field and quarterback. We don't know definitively if the starter, when they're both healthy, is going to be Trey Lance or Brock Party. So I don't love the over. I'm going to take the under. 